Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Northeast Wisconsin Signature Event, checking in 3565X Extronomy coming in out of Ontario. Had a good performance uh, so far this year. Skills, innovate, and amazing. Congratulations on those awards uh, so far. And uh, so far, Extronomy doing quite well here. We'll be talking about more on the robot as we go through. Uh, Short and Lady Browns, so we'll be diving more into that. Talking about the pneumatic systems and kind of giving you just a full overview of this robot. Uh, also doing some great weight saving measures on their intake as well, so pay attention to that. Let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Drone Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Alice, let's start talking about your drivetrain. What did you uh, choose to go with overall and talk to me more about it? Uh, for this season, we realized that the average robot spend has been increased. So our main goal for the drivetrain to find a good balance between easy to control and competitive during the match. So for the final, we decided to do a six motor, 400 RPM on a 3.25 inch wheel. For now, we found this really constant. It's not too fast to control, but provides a competitive speed during the match. Yeah, your team has been very reliable for a drivetrain overall on that. So let's go over to Lucas, who's going to talk more about uh, the uh, intake and then the Lady Brown mech. Uh, you know, you're using a short and Lady Brown. Love to hear more about that, but doing some great cost saving or weight saving measures on that intake as well. Talk to me more about it. Uh, so our intake, it's very different from other teams here. We use a polycarb intake uh, with hybrid using a. Um, a C channel. So the reason we switched to polycarb is because uh, we found that polycarb is way lighter than C channel. So the C channel we remove can balance out uh, our rush claw. Uh, and so our um, intake, we have uh, two pre rollers. So the first pre roller um, will bring the ring in, and then we, the second small pre roller, it would it would help assist uh, in bringing the ring in correctly without it getting stuck. And our whole intake uh, uses an 11 watt uh, motor and uh, we geared it really well here. I want to ask you on this, I noticed in here with these uh, the polycarb kind of guides here, the way that the uh, bolt is going up. Can you just talk to me more about this design? That's pretty unique that I haven't seen from other teams. Uh, so for this, it prevents it from uh, flying out or like moving way too much. So. Uh, it wouldn't break and it would keep it in place. So it's acting as like a hard stop for you, yeah. essentially that? Yeah. Now, I noticed when you're moving your intake, you do have a little bit of compliance on it as it goes through. Has that affected your match play at all? Uh, no, not really. Very cool. Uh, let's keep going. Can we see a ring actually come in and showcase what that sure. looks like? And then we'll talk more about uh, your Lady Brown mech as well. And so It goes in really well and it goes along really well with our clamp which we custom built as well. Very cool. And I know uh, you have the color sorter off right now. We'll be talking more about that a little bit later. Uh, so we saw that very smooth, as you said, as well. Talk to me about on your short and lady brown, uh, how did you have to modify it to get it to fit in your constraints? So our short lady brown, uh, our first robot, we had a longer one, which we couldn't score on a line stake without breaking the expansion limit. But with our short arm, we found out that um, we can score with um, a score, score a ring on the line stake, which is uh, really useful during autons, especially for signature event solo AWPs. And, uh, so we also use a ring pusher, which uh, which helps the ring go up higher uh, while it's uh, getting scored. Because a short arm, it might not always be in the correct position. Um, it might not always be in the correct position for scoring, so it would score. It would score, and we can keep another ring in. So when we bring it up, the the wall stake pusher keeps it in place without falling out or uh, or breaking and 
it really helps us during the score of all Yeah, we've seen a lot of issues with Lady Browns, right, with them coming out pretty easily yeah. on there. So great design to, to have for that. Tom, talk to me about uh, some of the different programming aspects of it. You know, we see the odometry pods, but I think one of the cool things uh, is it being tied to your uh, hang as well, too. So talk to me about how that all comes together. Well, of course. So for this reason, we realized that if you don't have a well-demonstrated tracking wheels, we will be now able to play the autonomous period well. So we are playing a lot of times on, on the tracking wheels part. We have an x-axis and a y-axis to independently tracking the uh, robot's uh, axis on the, on the field. One of the pretty unique points that we do uh, compared to the other team is we have uh, two sizes fixed for the, each of the tracking wheels. We have one on the y-axis and one on the x-axis. So the reason we do that is we realize that when the tracking wheel has been fixed by the two sides, it's going to be more reliable and more easy to fix. It's not going to be it's not going to be like easy to like shake and getting the wrong directions. And saying is um, so pretty unique parts on the here as we use the polycarbonate. So like compared to the, uh, other teams, they really sometimes they use the steels or the aluminum. We found that's uh, pretty light. We add one of these L channels on there to make them fix. It's not gonna shake. And uh, for our owl, we think this tracking wheel goes pretty well and it goes pretty smooth like this. And how does that lift up? How does it all tie together? So for now, we realize that the uh, tier one hang is gonna bring you like three more point advantage during the matches. And for now that we're having uh, issues on that. Before our previous regeneration robots, we realized we our hang is within the late round, it's connections. How about that? We realized that when your robots is doing the autonomous scale, when you're trying to do the wall stakes with your lady brown, the tracking wheel is gonna rise up. That do gives a little bit of troubles in the programming. So for now we have our independently hang with two pneumatics. So it's gonna race up and this have uh, some cutted zip ties with this um, wires up there. It's connected to each of their uh, tracking wheels. So you can take there when we rise or hang, both of the tracking wheels is gonna race up and it's gonna touch the ground. And it's also gonna have the conflicts when we're doing the scale program. And can you talk about how some of your other pneumatic systems come together in your robot? Sure. So there are so totally there are seven pneumatics going for robots with a one tank on there. So one help us with our intake race up. There's like a one ring cup that's under about the alliance alliance wall sticks with our one your color your alliance size color rings and up there. So this is help us to deal with that. We have two there with a doinker, or we call like the mogul sealers with theirs. There's one for the catcher and one for the doinker for steal up. And there's like um, to offer hook with two pneumatics with a hook to help us to catch it up. We believe that's pretty strong now. The other team is pretty, it's pretty hard to steal them from them. And there's uh, two more pneumatics uh, on top of there for hang that we just talked about. A couple last things we want to talk about on this. I uh, mentioned before, you didn't have your color short on, but you do have it on now. Can we demonstrate what that looks like? Uh, let's do that first, actually. Sure. So for a program, we uh, we use three sensors to help us to um, help us to get the color sorting works. There are two distance sensors and one visual sensor on it. So the two the two visual sensors, the mainly job of them is to detect the, tr the, the roots of the rings to make sure uh, where is the place on the conway right now and there are one visual sensors. So the color set is in our programs. Before that, we're gonna pick our lines and the program's gonna know which colors we are and which color we don't want. After that, when we pick the lines and then we go to the matches, we climb it on, the distance sensor's gonna work up with, with the whole things. And when the uh, visual sensor discards the colors that we don't want, it's gonna, the conway is gonna immediately stop and split the incorrect rings in. So for example, for now, we are picking the red alliance and the uh, common we're gonna split the blue alliance out. Very cool as it goes through. I mean, obviously been working out great for your team and very effective as it goes through. Last thing in here, uh, we were talking earlier that you have an Auton selector uh, on your controller as well too. Sure. Why don't you show us a little bit more how that works? So, got different with the other teams, they have a pretty lot of sets of the programs up there. Only there are only one main programs for uh, robots being set. For one main programs in there, we have um, uh, several buttons to help us to figure out what alliance and the programs we want to do. 
We have a Y button and an X button for alliance selections. We have the Y for the red alliance, X for the uh, blue alliance. When we figure that out, we get in and we have our um, we have our uh, auton selections. We have them here. We have our several auton here. We we'll make sure one we want to two. We press the button A to ensure that. And also during this position, if the several move cause the robot's coordinates getting wrong, we also have this B for the reset buttons. It's gonna reset the whole coordinates of the bot, and after that, when everything goes well, we're gonna click the button A. We plug in this com competition switch, and we just wait. Look, Strategy, overall, a great package you put together here. Thanks for detailing more of your robot. For us, a lot of great things teams can learn. Of course, wish you best of luck here at this signature event and throughout the rest of your season as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.